Hello there. I'm sure that you have been very studiously studying all day long for the biology exam. And you've probably come across some pretty interesting and some pretty confusing things. I'm sure that you've seen some very wild things like this, lambs with five legs. I'm sure you've seen some things like this, which you pretty much stare at for a while and you have absolutely no idea what it's talking about. And you may see some very cool images like this, we are kind of like, well, that's kind of cool. I wish I knew what it was. And then you see some very boring microscopic black and white things like this, which if you don't know, this is a flesh-eating bacteria, which turns out to be like this which we'll cover that up with a cute little bunny. And finally, you probably see a lot of this. Some very colorful, long, detailed diagrams, which you just kind of look at and you don't know what's happening. Well, this diagram here is a very boring and useless explanation of translation and lucky for you this video is going to go over translation in a more detailed and understandable way so when I say translation you are probably like that which I'm sure you've had these faces all day I know I've certainly had this one when I started to do this video <laughs> And you probably feel this way every time you read something in your biology textbook and you try to understand what it's talking about. Well, here's the basic breakdown. Translation, the generic definition, is the process in which mature mRNA is decoded to produce a protein. Well, that's great. How the freak does that happen? Because we have to know that. Well, the first thing that you need to know about translation is that it is a part of this ginormous concept in biology called the central dogma. Don't be intimidated by this kind of intricate, weird name. Um, pretty much it's just a way to explain or title the concept of the flow of genetic information or in other words, the coding and materials that tell like, what needs to happen in us, what needs to happen in our organisms, that sort of things. And for a visual, here is the central dogma. Really not that intimidating. We have DNA, which is the first thing. And the first you know, main step of occurrence that can happen in central dogma is replication of DNA, which as we know happens all the time. It's how we survive and create new cells. Well, you can then take DNA through a process called transcription in which you code for RNA. And while we're not going over replication or transcription in this video, transcription is important to understanding translation because you need to know what's going on prior to translation. So a basic rundown is that DNA was taken apart and it was copied one strand with a complementary version of RNA and that RNA right there then codes for proteins and that process of taking RNA to proteins is called translation. So one way you can kind of look at this big central dogma is like a train on a way on a trip. So we have the tracks, in other words, which we're going to use these nice arrows right here, in which they um, are kind of like the actual processes themselves. And we have these flags, the first one being DNA, and they will be our form of, let's say, a train stop. So DNA is our home base. That's where the train is leaving from. And it will go through a process, transcription, which will then in return create RNA, our second stop, which then goes through translation and creates proteins. And proteins are incredibly important for 
bodily functions, pretty much survival. We need proteins. And the central dogma is just this. This is all it is. It's just a basic concept, really, really basic, of how that information is relevant for functioning in our body. So there are three steps to translation. The first one is initiation. And just like the title, it's the kickstart to to translation. So you can kind of think of it as say you have a bunch of dominoes stacked up, say maybe you did that as a kid. Initiation is like pushing that very first domino. It's what starts this very long and repetitive process which will eventually end in a protein. The long repetitive process itself is stage two, elongation. That is the big bulk of the process and that that is the part where the actual protein or what's going to be the protein is being built. And the final part is termination. Now termination is the end, just like it says, you know, these are pretty basic self-explanatory. Um, if you want to make a little code, you got I, E, T, that helps you remember it. Um, termination just pretty much ends it and sends off that polypeptide chain to where it needs to be and if you're confused right now do not worry we're about to go into these in detail so now we're going to move on um so <laughs> the first thing we need to remember before we talk about initiation is what we have going into initiation so at this point the dna has been copied for that rna complementary strand it has been spliced of introns, which, in a basic sense, it has removed all unnecessary genetic information from it. So it is mature mRNA, and it's going to look something like the very bottom right here. So we have, it is ready to go, and it is going to enter the ribosome, where all of translation occurs and it codes for something. As you see, it has these bases, and that's what these three bases, that's uh, three of them like this, that will code for a certain protein, and that's how, in translation, we're able to get what we want. So, you could kind of think of this as a set of instructions on how to build a protein. Lucky for us, it is not nearly confusing as IKEA <laughs> instructions. So the very first step of initiation, we have the mature mRNA strand right here. It comes in and attaches onto the small ribosomal subunit, this right here. Then the next step, the large ribosomal subunit, this right here, comes and it attaches on top as well. What happens then is the AUG, this right here, is at the P site of the large ribosomal subunit. And that was kind of a little fancy way for pretty much saying that the very, the start codon or the, the thing that's like, all right, it's time to start making a protein is at that P site so initiation can continue. Now there are three sites, as you can see, A, P, E. And um, it's kind of easier to understand them as I talk about the process. You'll kind of see what each one represents. So at the end, I'll review that again so you maybe can understand it better. So next, we have the very first tRNA, which is this piece right here, attaches to this codon, the three letters, with the corresponding amino acid. And the start codon, AUG, always codes for MET. That's the beginning. Next, another tRNA, this pink one right here, will code onto the next one in the A site. Think of the A site as kind of like the waiting in line, like your next in line site. And it has its other amino acid that codes for the correct thing. Next, the amino acid that's in the P site will form a polypeptide bond with the one next to it. So this, what happens now is this does not have 
an amino acid on it. It has started to create what will eventually be a chain. So if you're kind of confused right now, we'll take this into more of a metaphor. What we can do is we can look at this small ribosomal subunit as, say, the bottom bread in a sandwich, and the large one is the top piece. And in between, we have the mRNA here, and that could be, let's say, our meat or our cheese, a nice bulk in the center. And each time these tRNAs are coding for something, it's like you adding something onto that sandwich as you create this chain. So this is the mustard, this is the pickles, that sort of thing. So it's just coming like this big ingredient process. Um, so like I said, you know, hopefully I helped a little. We have this chain that has started to be built. And here's another concept. Uh, what happens now is they all shift to the left. So the mRNA, this right here, is moving to the left. And then the tRNA that was in the P site now moves to the E site, or the exit site. Next, it releases from the exit site, and this one stays in the P site. And during this time, another tRNA will come in here to the A site. This will code for the next three, the next codon, and it will form a bond with the other amino acid and it will keep going. So at this point we're in elongation which is the second step and in elongation we have the chain here that is being built over time and it's kind of it's just like a chain link almost you could kind of think of it as like you're shooting uh, got a necklace you're making if you ever made necklace um, or if you ever made some fake foil <laughs> things for your Christmas tree you have your string and you just put the bead on and on and say you're following a pattern you have like a instructions and it says put the blue one now put the red one now put the orange one that sort of thing so with these codons say AUG ACC happens is it's like telling you put the blue bead on put the orange bead on and eventually it just keeps going on and forming these bonds in between them once they has completed the mRNA, it will have a nice long chain here, which will be still be attached to tRNA. So at this point, just like AUG is the start codon, which is like, hey, it's time to start making that protein, we have a stop codon. So then what happens is we have this nice purplish pink thing which is called a release factor. And the release factor comes in and it attaches to the stop codon, just like these tRNAs have been attaching to each of the codons as it goes. And it is a signal and it's pretty much saying, hey, uh, we finished, say, like we go back to the beads analogy, we finished the necklace, it's time to tie it up, put on that clasp so you can wear it. So it's saying, hey, like we finished the chain, the polypeptide chain, that which would be this part here. So it's time for us to finish up. So what happens is the polypeptide chain is released by the tRNA. And then finally, the entire uh, giant process releases on its own. So the release factor causes the separation of the polypeptide chain and all of the sort of translation machinery so they all go their separate ways. So at the end here I said I'd go back over real quick the sites because sometimes they can get a little bit confusing. Um, we'll start from the right. So we have the A site and a very simple way of putting it as we've seen through this process is that it's kind of like the loading site. You know like if you're getting on a roller coaster and you're next in line that's kind of what it is you know it it comes in and codes and holds on and it shifts to the P site and the P site is where the bonds are being made this chain here was being made and then the tRNA would shift to the E site which is where it would exit so I mean it's pretty simple but it's kind of hard to harder to understand in the beginning so I hope that that kind of clarified what those sites were 
a little bit. So we're done with translation and we have made this polypeptide chain. So we're kind of like, whoa, what exactly happens to it? Well, it will turn into a protein and not exactly that kind of protein, but this kind of protein, the pretty colorful curly one. And this is just a basic structure of a protein 3D model. These proteins are extremely important for our bodily functions. They're involved in almost every single process, and not just humans, other organisms as well. So it's important that we have translation, and you know, that really goes back to the central dogma, and that it, it's just that flow of genetic information making things so our body can function. And that makes our body very happy. So that is the end of this video. I hope that it was helpful for you and best of luck on your test or exam or whatever you may have.